on any scenario that has like more than four or five signers, do your best to win over one or two and try to get one or two to be like the herder. The one that's gonna come in and like hurdle the cattle, like the one that's gonna call each sibling. Hey, we got this on the line. I need you to be ready to sign, you know, this document. This is how it's gonna work. Like a quarterback, like for you to be in contact with that quarterback. And then that's how I've seen has success on these that has like five, seven or more signers. He's had experience with one with nine signers that we signed up. I don't remember we sold and then he's working this one with 15 and I know he's gotten one other one with seven signers. Yeah, and then the, the house, uh, we ended up dropping the That was 16 signers. The 16 signers. So if you wanna like freaking start his own course on how to. <laughs> Yes, if you have more than 10 signers that you need to account for on a deal, yeah. I got the course for you. You should start selling them. <laughs> <laughs> Money. You have to really start getting creative. Yeah, you have to get. Like, wonder if I should even like approach it. Cause like, okay, I get half of them to sign, but then I don't even, no one even knows the names of the other people. One thing that I do now, whenever I go into that scenario, that I see with multiple signers, third party story, this has happened to me before, and yeah. that's something that, that makes us very uncertain. Like, and it kind of puts them in a way, like, okay, so they trying to back out of this shit. That's kind of like the mentality that I always go into it now, and it gets on like, to, to show you, no, 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 like, we got it together. Like, no, no, we're gonna sell. But that, that's like the, the first thing that I do now, whenever I get in there, I try to do that with everything. Third party stories are a very good tactic. And with your third party story, you're like saying, look, Sometimes I'm worried about like working on these when there's multiple signers because sometimes not everyone can get on board. Wow, that's beautiful. And then instantly they'll tell you what everyone's thinking right then and there. Instantly they'll try to pitch it to you like, no, no, everybody's on board. They all want to sell. We already talked. I was like, yeah, we, they have told us that before. And then this always seems to be an issue when one person wants to keep the property and they just, we don't like doing certain things. Well, whenever we have a deal, we want to make sure that we can close on it and we've got our workers working with the deal. So like, I, that's kind of like my tactic that I go into it now, just kind of pull away because like this is an ugly deal because you have so many signs. Like I'd rather go buy a house if you want to. Mm -hmm. But if you want to, if you want to play ball, this is how we have to do it because we've already done this before. Like I just had this happen with us like one month ago and put a name to it. We had the family and they had X amount of people and this is how we did it. There's usually one or two people in the family where they take a responsibility and they get everybody kind of on board. I would tell everybody or the quarterback that you're trying to get to spread the message, like be very clear. If 100% of your brothers and sisters don't sign, nobody gets a dime. So not only do they have to sign this contract initially or agreement initially, they're also gonna have to sign some paperwork on the day of closing. They have to be available. They don't have to come to our title company in person, but make sure that they're available to sign a document in order for them to get paid. Wow, I've never looked at it like that. <clears throat> I'm only the one trying to bridge everyone. Yeah, no, kind of put it on quarterback. If you can't quarterback and get your seven brothers and sisters on the same page, we can't move forward with this. We have a lot of no time to waste and we have plenty of other houses where there's just one or two people that need to sign. Go ahead. Okay. I have another one too where I already got everyone to sign minus one lady who's mooching in the house for free. Yeah, you have that scenario too. Right, that's the person that's not gonna wanna sign because they're living there for free. I have a meeting with all of the siblings who are on board Run them through probate and partition that shit. So I'll see if that goes through. That's another tactic you can try. But if there's so many yeah. people that could be a shit show, like to have a conference call with everybody that needs to sign. We've had also where all the siblings are local and they've all gone to the house and done like a kumbaya. Everybody, seven, nine people there and then our acquisition agent answering everybody's questions. Funny you brought that up. Next Monday, there's 11 people, all signers coming here. <laughs> Shit, nice. We had one guy come into the office last week in person and he wanted to sign in our office. But yeah, those are fun. Those are, I like those challenging ones, but yeah, kind of put it on the quarterback or the two or three people that are mostly involved in those scenarios and tell them, hey, if you can't get everybody on board, we're not gonna go anywhere. Like we got the probate attorney if you need, I can help you with that. I need you to kind of herd your family here and tell them what it is. Because from our experience, these are the negatives that can go on. And the negative is a lot of times one guy wants either more money or a certain term, or he's living in the house for free and he's not gonna sign shit unless you maybe pay him. So on those scenarios where a signer is living for free in the house, even if it's not a signer, you're gonna have to possibly pay them. 